Hi, I'm Cindy McKay. I'm from the Mud Hole Instructional Staff Team. And today I'm gonna to go over the marbling process with you. Mud Hole has a selection of both liquid and dry pigment of um, marbling pigments to add to your epoxy. In the liquid pigments, there are nine different colors. And that doesn't limit you to just those nine colors because there's a color wheel where you can actually combine some colors and make many other different colors by using that color wheel. In addition, they have a, a powdered pigment that gets added to the epoxy just like the liquid does. And there's a, more than 30 of these. Now these, which are powdered, have, have a nice metallic flare to them. Um, some of the examples down below, you can see the ones that have the metallic in it has like a little speckled fleck. What I've done, and I'm um, using the mud hole slip clutch dryer so that while I'm working on this marbling section, I can actually stop the rod from turning to do a little bit of artistic flair and then let it go and let it keep spinning. I'm utilizing the mud hole mixer because I have mixed two batches. So the first batch I've already laid down a complete clear finish of epoxy in the section that I want to marble. Now of course I have taped off that section of what I'm doing and a great application for marbling would be in a split grip section of a, of a rod um, or also right above the foregrip just a small decorative area. Another thing you can do with marbling is when you do your guides, if you want to add just a little bit of color to that, mar to that epoxy that you're putting on your guides, you can also do that. So what I'm going to do is show you as this is spinning and leveling out, I'm going to pull out the last little bit of epoxy here. I've already mixed up some colors, but I want you to see that it really doesn't take a lot of the pigment to actually change the color of the epoxy. I'm just putting in a nice little blob of epoxy in this palette. These palettes are really nice for laying out your color schemes and what you want to do. Mudhole sells these as well. Kind of helps you give, get a plan going in a scheme. I have some black in here that I'm also going to mix in. So here's, all of these have been mixed already, but this one right here is clear. So you're going to see, I'm gonna add this blue to the epoxy. Now, as these sit on the shelf, you'll see a little bit of the separation of the oil. So you do wanna give it a good mix before you actually put it in your epoxy. And you'll notice, again, that it takes very little to change the color of that epoxy. If I were use, to use a black blank, and most of the blanks, you know, if they're not a color of white or one of the color schemes, a lot of your blanks are black. And to get the colors of the pigments, the marbling, to really pop, what you'll want to do is if you can see in this container right here, I have some white that's been mixed up. So if this blank were black, I would just take my brush and paint this section right here with the white epoxy rather than the clear. Next, I'm just going to take a pick. Now, a, anything pointy, um, sh a small sharp end, a toothpick, uh, a dental pick, mud hole of course sells a nice kit that has different um, widths of ends for draw, drawing that epoxy in, and that's what I'm gonna use. The beauty about marbling is that there's no right or wrong way. If you get started and you're putting it on your epoxy and you're making a pattern and you don't like it, you can really just wipe it off and start over again. It's easy to clean up as long as the epoxy has not dried or set up. This is one of the picks that I was mentioning that mud hole sells. I think down here, I'm gonna just start out with a basic red, white, and blue theme. And all I'm doing is with my pick, I'm picking up just little pieces of this epoxy and I'm doing circles for now. You can do lines, you can do uh, waves, you can make flames. Again, no right or wrong. One of the things I do like to do is if I'm working with darker colors, I will start with those first just to help those lighter colors come out. And even though the blank is white, I'm gonna throw some white into the mix here, right across some of these other colors that I've used. And now, as this rod has turning, 
I would just drag some of those colors together. And this is what helps to make them blend. As that, um, and I'm gonna hold, stop this for a minute so I can get a dab of red right there. Slip clutch really makes it nice for being able to do that. So as these colors are um, blended and turning and the epoxy is leveling out, those colors kind of mend and mold and fold together. But with my pick, I'm gonna help them out a little bit. And you can see, we'll let that spin and see how it goes. And then I'll come back in just a couple minutes and check on that and see how it goes. Down here, I'll do a couple darker colors. This is um, kind of like a darker green. And I'm gonna do stripes with this one. Now, if you really wanna get some really stringy epoxy, what you can do, and I have sitting on the, the desk here, is some Threadmaster color preserver. You have to use the, the Threadmaster brand, but you would add that to your mixed epoxy, stir it up, and you'll get a really nice stringy effect so that when you pull that paint up out of that, it's, it's almost like a big long string. And these, this green is pretty dark green, so we're gonna get that to mold in with some magenta. Notice I have to keep wiping that pick before I pick up more paint. And that base coat is clear, so it's not hurting anything. You can also use a coffee straw and really just kind of blow some of the colors around. It's another method to use it. Um, now I left this nice section right here in the in the middle to hopefully get some of these other colors to really pop. That last blue that I po I poured in is a nice bright blue. I'm going to do some dabs and dots of that. And then I am going to throw on some of that orange and yellow. And we'll mix those together. Notice I'm keeping my pan of paint right below what I'm marbling. Um, this is where if I were doing, you know, the split section and above the foregrip, this is where the epoxy mixer really comes in nice because while I'm working on this, I could have another batch of epoxy going in that epoxy mixer ready to just pour out, mix up some more colors and keep on going. And that is pretty much the gist of marbling. Now, my magenta is pretty, pretty magenta and my green kind of got washed out. So I'm gonna try and just put a little bit of green next to that, just so you can see what that color looks like. So pretty much I've tried to use all of the colors in the kit so you can see what it looks like on the blank. I'll take the alcohol burner that has denatured alcohol in it. It's actually a fuel and it will draw, it will, excuse me, burn cleaner and cooler than regular alcohol will. So another way to get these colors to kind of fold together and mush up is to add a little bit of um, heat to this epoxy, just like you would do with your um, guides. After you've put the epoxy on, you draw that heat, with that heat, you draw that excess epoxy off and you get it, help it to level out. If I just put a little bit of heat on here, it helps that epoxy with the pigment in it to flow together. I'm not really looking to draw any off. I'm just looking to get those colors to mix. And if you can see, it kind of helped to get some of those colors just kind of fold in together. Um, my red, white, and blue, it's not too bad. The middle colors are popping really good. And of course, down here on the end, the magenta and the dark green are pretty dark. If you had uh, guide wraps of those colors, that would be a really nice accent to have down in a split grip section. So when you are all finished, you are just gonna let this cure overnight and then you are all finished.